Today, we're going to be going over five different wide receiver press releases, when to use each one, and then the technique behind each one. So the first one we're going to be going over is something called a fake diamond release. So I'm sure all of you guys have probably heard of a diamond release before, whether it's from my videos, maybe a receiver coach you work with, whatever. But a diamond release is when you have to run a slant route versus a DB who is lined up in inside shade press. So we were trying to make it look like that specific release. And so you would want to use this fake diamond release when you have an inside shade press guy and you have to run a fade. So a diamond release is usually when you take three hard steps at the DB's outside shoulder and outside hip. The goal is to get him to open up the gate so we could slip back underneath and win on my slant route. So you would do that because when a DB is lined up inside shade, his goal is to not give up the slant route. He does not want to let us release to the inside or run an inside breaking route. So what we would do instead of just trying to force the release, have him get hands on me, we use that diamond release. The goal is to get him to open up so I could slip underneath like I said. So when you're using a fake diamond release, you have to make it look the exact same. So he comes off. This is a four-step release. A diamond release is a three-step. A fake diamond release is a four-step release. You see, he comes off here. That's the first step of the diamond release. So he comes off. It's one, two, three three, four, and he puts the brakes on and jabs back to the inside to make this DB feel like he is getting beat underneath on that diamond release slant. Maybe this wide receiver has used it before. Maybe you guys have used this release on film, but this fake diamond release is a great release to use to get separation on a fade route when maybe you like using a diamond release and you've showed that on film. Now, very important on this release, guys, because it is a wide release that you get back and get skinny into this DB to give the quarterback room to fade you. A lot of guys, when they do this release, they'll release to the outside. They do a great job one two three four put the brakes on but then they start to fade to the sideline and guys on a fade route the quarterback needs room to fade us so you got to dip that inside shoulder lower your pad level and get right into this db's hip so we could either stack him or at least just run hip to hip with him to give my quarterback room you have to give him room on this when using this fake diamond release so i'm going to play this again full speed one more time great release here to get separation on a fade route versus inside shade press great job there by brandon cook so now this next release we're going to be talking about is kind of like a mid route release or a second level release and that is something called like a mid route tempo change or hesitation skip now before i break down this clip of film here from ricky pearsall guys if you're a wide receiver and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off season we are going to be coming out to 11 more states across the u.s for two day long qb and wide receiver training camps every single camp on the left side of the screen here is completely sold out and the rest of our camps will sell out guys so if you're local to buffalo atlanta houston Philly, Detroit, Boise, or Los Angeles, and you'd like to train with us, guys, check out that very first link in the description below. That's where you can get all the information, what we'll be covering at the camps, the dates of the camps, and how you can sign up. So like I said, guys, all of these camps will sell out probably within the next two months. So we hope we can see you there, fellas. Again, very first link in that description below. If you're local to one of these cities, let's get back to these releases. So like I was talking about, is kind of like a second level release, mid route release. I call this a mid route tempo change or hesitation skip. So let's watch what he does coming off here. He's going to be running this like deep 15 yard out route versus a DB who's inside shade. So you want to use this, I would say, when you have an outside release versus an inside shade press guy. Whether you're running an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route, but preferably either on a corner route, an out route, or a comeback. So let's play this full speed. So he comes off the ball and you see how he does a little skip mid route. All that does is just change the DB's tempo, changes his speed so we can burst up field and get a reaction out of him, if that makes sense. So let's talk about it. So what is a hesitation skip? A hesitation skip is where like, you see how when, when you're running, obviously this is going to sound very basic to some of you. When you're running, you go, obviously you step with your right foot and then you step with your left foot. A hesitation skip is where instead of going right, left, you would step with the right foot, then you would go left left. So you would essentially take two steps on the same foot. And those two steps naturally slow you down, change your tempo, and that's what can change a DB's tempo. So you see how he comes off the ball right here? He steps with the right foot, then he goes left, left, and then he bursts up field. So that little bit of a tempo change is what can get that DB to slow down his tempo. So when we re-accelerate back up field, that DB will overcommit, right? You almost want to think of it like your release in terms of like, um, like speed, I guess you could say. Off the ball, we're 100. Then we go zero with the skip. Then we're back to 100. So when we take that like hesitation skip that we see here from Pearsall, where he just takes this like double hop on the left foot, that slows the DB's feet down. Then when we re-accelerate back up vertical, that DB's, oh crap, I don't want to get beat over 
the top because a lot of receivers will use a move like this on what? A fade route, some type of route downfield where we're trying to take the top off the defense. So maybe you've used that before. Maybe you have used this move in your backside. Guys, running routes backside, like let's say you just have to run a fade and your job is to run the DB out of there. You can set up different routes and different moves that you would use. Now with this tempo change, you have to be very careful. You want to use it in the right situation. He's using this on a deep 15 yard out. So he has a little bit of time, but if you guys are running like a 10 yard speed out where you're supposed to use a speed cut, probably not the best move to use, but if it's like maybe like a sprint out situation, you have to run an out route or it's a deeper route route and you have some time, that's when I would use this move. So it's mid route, Tempo skip or hesitation skip is a great release that you can use. More of a second level release, okay? So now, next example we're going to be talking about here is from Garrett Wilson. And this is going to be something called a reaction split release. So a split release, I'm sure you guys have all probably seen, but you maybe not have heard of it in terms of like reaction, like a reaction light, I guess you could say. So let's watch Garrett Wilson do this full speed. Then we'll break down the technique of it. So you could use this reaction split release, honestly, versus any type of press coverage. Inside shade, outside shade, head up press. It doesn't really matter where the DB is lined up, but the way we react off of it is based on the technique, right? So a lot of times, guys, with releases, I talk a lot about having a plan, right? We were talking about that fake diamond release, so we were going vertical. That fake diamond release was always used against inside shade press. Okay, that's the coverage that we see at the line of scrimmage. That's the release that I'm choosing. But I'd be a fool to not tell you guys that a DB sometimes will disguise his leverage. He'll line up inside shade, ball snapped, and he'll jump to the outside. Or vice versa, he'll be outside shade, you have a release plan, he jumps to the inside. A great receiver is also great at reacting. So the releases that you choose, I feel should also be able to put you in a position to react, right? So a split release is exactly how it sounds. You take your front foot and you move it out, and then you take your back foot and you move it up. A lot of people move their feet very wide when they do this release, but all it is just a simple move outward, and then this back foot steps up. Both feet need to make contact with the grass at the exact same time. So now when you split your feet, the reason why this is a great reaction release is is because both feet are in the grass at the same time, and because you have a low pad level position, because you have a slight lean forward, you're in a position of balance. And a position of balance allows you to either release to the inside, or you could release to the outside. It, it does not matter which way you release when you are reacting off of this split. So remember, front foot goes out, back foot goes up. So DB was lined up inside shade pre-snap. Ideally, what we would like to do is maybe a split release, give a little fake inside, and release to the outside. Ideal, right? Because the DB's inside shade. If he's inside shade, I'm not going to be able to take an inside release without him getting contact and rerouting me to the inside. And his goal in press coverage is to get contact. So if we do this split release, you guys, and this DB jumps to the outside because both cleats hit the grass at the same time, because I'm in a position of balance, what can Garrett Wilson do right here? He could push and he could release to the inside. And this is a very clean version of this. If you take maybe an extra step or maybe you try to release, he jumps and you put the brakes on, then go to the inside. That's totally fine. That's part of the situation. That's part of the reaction. But this is one of the cleanest reactionary split releases I've seen just because of how smooth it is. But you see how the DB changes up his leverage, changes up what he's doing, and we're still able to react and take the inside release. That is exactly how you play this. So split release, guys, you could use it against head up press, inside shape press, or outside shape press. My biggest piece of advice to you, though, is don't think about it like a reaction. You see pre-snap, he's inside shade. Your mindset should be, okay, I'm going to do this split release, and I'm going to release to the outside. And then if I do this split release and try to release to the outside, but this DB jumps it, okay, cool. Let's put the brakes on and take the inside release. So a reactionary split release, third best release that you guys can use from this video. So now, next release we're gonna be going over is something called, I would say, like a slide, almost like a reverse slide release. I guess you could call this like a power skip release. So this power skip is something that you use with your back foot to help you attack a DB's leverage when he is inside. So I love this release when we have inside leverage. This isn't press. This is more so like catch technique, I guess you could say. Some might consider it off, man, but when he's inside shade and he's about three to five yards away, I love this release because this back foot power skip, I guess you could say, or power step is a great way to help you close the space with the DB. So let's play this full speed, then we'll break it down. So he takes a step, but this power skip is what allows him to close the space with the DB and obviously runs this dig route with an outside release. So let's talk about it, right? So we have to run a 10 to 12 yard dig route. I have a DB who's lined up inside shade, right? So when he's inside shade, we know that we're probably 
not going to be able to take the inside release, especially in the red zone. His job in the red zone is do not get beat to the inside. So if I try to force it, he's going to get hands on me. He's going to force me inside. I break to this dig, and I'm either going to be right on top of another receiver or running into other defenders because my spacing sucks on the play. So what we have to do is we have to attack the DB to the inside. Now, it's more than just attacking him. I got to bring this line of scrimmage to him. I got to try to step onto his toes, right? So when we come off the line of scrimmage and we attack him, let's say, for example, he just threw like a quick jab to the inside. Maybe the DB moved. But our break is still at 10 yards. So if there's two to three yards of space and we're trying to release to the outside, he's just going to cut me off to the angle. If I'm right here, he's going to cut me off to the angle, get hands, and my break point's going to be weak. So what I have to do is I got to bring that line of scrimmage to him. I got to try to step on his toes. And this power skip release is how I can do that. So he takes a couple steps off the line, but this step right here is the step that does it. You plant hard with your outside foot and you are pushing off of the outside foot to create some energy to get you going so you can close the space with the DB. And it's a fast way to do it. So it's almost like instead of jabbing with your left foot, it's a jab with your back foot. So he takes this step up, he punches off that back foot and you are pushing off the back foot. He pushes off of it and that's what allows him to close space. He throws this crossover to the inside. Does it have to be like right away off of it? No, it does not. When I actually work this with receivers, we work this punch step right here. So this power skip step and I'll have them go, but I have them get their feet underneath them first and then they throw the crossover fake. So, but remember the power skip is what allows us to close the space. Instead of us just coming off the ball and running at him and then giving him a move. This power skip is a way to kind of create some more urgency and honestly just to get this DB to hesitate. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great example of a power skip release that you guys can use. Remember, we want to use this when the DB is about three to five yards off and inside shade. And so now, fifth best, re best release that you guys can use from this video is something called a dive release. So a dive release is going to be perfectly executed here from Calvin Ridley. A dive release is built from a team who runs a lot of drag. So if you're in like an air raid system, a spread offense, and you guys run a lot of like mesh concepts where you're running a drag across the field, drag, and you're constantly crossing this DB's face, when it's man-to-man, -man, a dive release is a great release to use. So it's kind of like that diamond release we talked about in the beginning of this video where you take three hard steps at a DB's outside shoulder and out outside hip, but instead it's two to three steps at his inside hip and inside shoulder to sell the drag. So I personally like this on a fade route. I like it on a comeback, an out route, or a corner route, anything outside breaking. So let's watch how he does this here. So he dives to the inside, three hard steps. He kind of starts this off with a split release, which is um, not something that you need to do, but it can help you in terms of steps. So you see how he does this split release where his inside foot goes out, his back foot goes up. And so when he does this, that would be considered the first step. So that's why it's either two or three steps because some guys might add this to the beginning of it and they take three steps across this DB's face. Some guys may just go straight from their stance and step with their right foot first and then break off the left foot in this case because they're on the right side of the field. So that's when it would be two steps, right? So he does this split release, one, two, three. And when you do this dive release, you guys, you have to make sure we're doing a couple things because the goal is to get this DB to open up his hips to the inside and open up the gate. Make him think we're running a drag, a slant, a deep cross or whatever, something that crosses his face. So for me to do that, I got to run hard. DB will not open up his hips if you don't run hard. I got to run with long strides and my hips and my shoulders have to be committed to the break. A lot of guys will do this release and take choppy steps. You see how much ground he is gaining. That's what sells it. Now, another thing guys will do is that their hip and their shoulder will cheat the break. They'll already be trying to get out of it before they cut. You have to stay committed. I say belly button committed in the direction you're going until it's time to cut. And if you guys can do that on this dive release, that will help you get separation. So dive release, the fifth best release that you guys can use a receiver from this video.